Hello, this is Ray Main here again with today's Bible reading. Today we'll be reading in 1 Kings, the book of 1 Kings, chapter 10. And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words, until I came, and mine eyes had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, therefore made he thee king, to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices very great store, and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices as these which the queen of Sheba gave the king Solomon. And the navy also of Hiram, that brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir great plenty of almug trees and precious stones. And the king made of the almug trees pillars for the house of the Lord, and for the king's house, harps also, and psalteries for singers. There came no such almug trees, nor were seen unto this day. And King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred threescore and six talents of gold. Beside that he had of the merchantmen, and of the traffic of the spice merchants, and of all the kings of Arabia, and of the governors of the country. And King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold, six hundred shekels of gold went to one target, and he made three hundred shields of beaten gold, three pounds of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were stays on either side on the place of the seat, and two lines stood beside the stays. And twelve lines stood there on the one side, and on the other side, upon the six steps, there was not the like made in any kingdom. And all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold, none were of silver. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king had at sea a navy of, a navy of Tharshish with the navy of Hiram, once in three years came the navy of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules, a right year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the cities for chariots, and with the king in Jerusalem. And the king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones, and cedars made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt, and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yard at a price. And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for six hundred shekels of silver, and a horse for a hundred and fifty, and so for all the kings of the Hittites, and for the kings of Syria, 
did they bring them out by their means? Well, what can we gain out of this chapter? There was a lot of opulence here, wasn't there? There wasn't anything withheld from Solomon. Since silver wasn't even known, they, they kind of looked down on silver. Everything was gold. God had given the man wisdom, and he had caused men to bring unto him the treasures of the world. His wisdom was heard of all over the country, way down into Africa, way north, way east. But as we'll see in the next chapter, over a period of time, all these riches, Solomon was living high up on the mountain, so to speak, in his own spirit. And he got to a place to where uh, there wasn't anything denied him, and he didn't deny himself in any thing. Money's good. We have to have it to get by. We have to have it to pay our bills today. It sure makes life easier, or I think it would. <laughs> we seem to think that it would. But you know there's a danger now. I think that, you know, this This is a, a good example of the blessings of God that he laid upon Solomon. But do you remember the commitment that God had made to Solomon that if he would walk in his statutes, if he would, if uh, he and, and the people of Israel would keep his commandments, then God made a promise to him. But part of that commandment, and this is the part that men today forget, everybody wants the blessings. But we have a tendency to forget that, uh, you know, there's another part of that too. He said, but if you don't, well, then this is going to happen to you. I think today would be a good day. I just take this for what it's worth. I'm going to do it. I think today would be a good day to search your life to think about the goodness of God, to think about all the things that he's allowed you to use in this life, the benefits that he's given you. Some of you might say, well, I don't have any. Yes, you do. Look around. You may be poor. You may not be rich. You may not have a lot of money. You may not be living in the upper strata of society. But if you look around with open eyes and an honest heart, you'll be able to, to list hundreds of things that God has done for you, of the goodness of God for you, from the being able to see, from the being able to hear, from the being able to just get up and down for your children, for the very air that you breathe, Think about that today. Let's go into right now as I record this. This is this going into a weekend. This is a Saturday. As we're approaching this weekend, let's try to get closer to God and realize that without Him, there's no hope. Without Him, there's no abundance. Without Him, there's no life. Let's focus on that today. What do you say? I trust you'll have a blessed day. God bless you.